Throughout history, philosophers have explored the idea of one as a fundamental concept in reality. From the ancient Greek Greeks, such as Parmenides, who saw one as synonymous with being, to the Stoics, who believed the universe is made up of a, of a single substance, the Logos, to the Indian tradition of Advaita Vedanta, which teaches the ultimate reality, non dual Brahma. Parmenides, Parm, Parmenides, Parmenides was a pre Socrat, Socratic, Socratic. I am really messing up with this. Parmenides was a pre Socratic Greek philosopher who lived in the fifth century BCE. He was one of the earliest Western philosophers to write about the concept of one. Parmenides believed that the concept of one was synonymous with the concept of being. According to him, the, be the only thing that truly exists is the unchanging, eternal, and invisible one. He argued that change multiplicity and diversity were more appearances and that there is only one unchanging reality. Parmenides' views were based on his belief in the principle of non-contradictions, which states that something cannot both be and not be at the same time. He argued that since change evolved things both being and not being, it is illusory and that only the unchanging one truly exists. <clears throat> this led Prometheus to conclude that the world of appearances, which includes change, multiplicity, and diversity, is not, a, is not real and that the only reality is the unchanging one. Parmenides' idea had a profound impact on the development of the Western philosophy and it had been a topic of discussion and debate for centuries. Some have argued that his view, views were, were an early form of monism which holds that the universe is made up of a single substance. Other, ha, others have seen his view, views as a form of idealism which holds that reality is ultimately mental or spiritual in nature, regardless of the interpretations. Parmenides' idea about the concept of one continues to be studied and discussed today. It's important to note that while Parmenides' view were influential in the development of the Western philosophy, they were not universally accepted by other pre-Socratic philosophers. For example, the philosopher Her Heraclitus took the opposite view and argued that change was the only constant and that nothing remains the same. The debate between Parmenides and Heraclitus Oh my good, that's a hard Here, Aclatus is often seen as a cornerstone of early Western philosophy and continued to shape philosophical discussions about nature of reality and the concept of one. <laughs> On the other hand, the Stoics were a group of ancient philosophers active in Greece and Rome who believed in a single unchanging substance called the Logos. They believed that the Logos was the organizing principle of the universe and, and that it was what gave rise to the multiplicity and diversity of the world. For the Stoics, the Logos was not just an abstract idea, but a living and active force in the universe. They saw it as a divine mind that ordered and governed the world and that it wasn't it was present in all things 
from the smallest particle to the largest celestial body. The Stoics believed that the goal of life was to live in accordance with the Logos. This meant recognizing that everything is interconnected and part of the One, and that it is necessary to cultivate a rational, virtuous, and harmonious character order in order to live in harmony with the universe. In terms of the concept of one, the Stoics saw Logos as the underlying unity of the universe. For them, the universe was not made up of many disparate things, but, in, but was instead a single interconnected whole. This unity was expressed through the idea of the Logos, which was present in everything and gave everything its unique character. Overall, the Stoics' perspective of the concept of one offers a unique understanding of the underlying unity of the universe and emphasizing the impact of living in accordance with this unity. By recognizing the unity of all things and living in harmony with the Logos, the Stoics believed that it was possible to achieve vitreous, fulfilling life and a deeper understanding of the world. And last but not, but not least, Advaita Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta, or Vedanta, is an Indian philosophical tradition. And I really, again, I'm sorry if I pronounced this wrong. Tradition that focuses on the concept of what? The central tenet of Advaita Vedanta is that the ultimate reality is the absolute non-dual Brahma. Brahma is considered to be the supreme, unchanging, and inter internal reality that underlines all of existence. This means that all things, whether physical or mental or ultimately, ultimately illusory, and that only Brahma truly exists. So let me repeat this sentence. I might be a little confusing. This means that all things, whether physical or mental, are ultimately illusory, illusionary, or illusory, and that only Brahma truly exists. According to Advaita Vedanta, the goal of human life is to realize the oneness of the self with Brahma. This is achieved through a process of spiritual liberation called Mokha Moksha. Moksha, Moksha, I think I said that right, Moksha, M-O-K-S-H-A, Moksha, hopefully that's correct, is achieved through the combination of spiritual practices such as meditation and self-reflection, as well as a deep understanding of the nature of reality. One of the key ideas in Advaita Veda, Ven, Ved, Anta is the distinction between the phenomenal world and the ultimate reality of Brahma. The phenomenal world is the world of appearances, a world of change, a world of plasticity. It connect it contrast. In contrast, Brahma is the is unchanging and eternal. Advaita Vedanta teaches that our ultimate goal should be to realize that the phenomenal world is illusionary and to experience the ultimate reality of Brahma. The teachings of Advaita Vedanta have had a profound impact on India, India, spirituality, and philosophy. The idea of Brahma has been integrated into Hinduism, Buddhism, and the other Indian spiritual traditions and it continues to influence spirituality and philosophy in India and around the world. In conclusion, the concept of the one and the Indian philosophy tradition of Advaita Vedanta emphasizes the ultimate, the ultimate unity of all things and the non-dual nature of reality. This perspective offers a unique understanding of the concept of one and the role is play, it plays in human life and spirituality. In conclusion, 
the concept of one has been a central theme in philosophy discourse throughout the ages from Parmenides this view to of the unchanging and invisible entity that underlies all of reality to the stoics believing in a single unchanging substance that gives rise to the world's diversity to advent uh, to Advaita Vedanta's teaching of the ultimate non-dual reality of Brahma, each philosophical tradition offers a unique understanding of the concept of oneness. Additionally, perspectives such as monism, dualism, and pluralism provide further insight into how different philosophy philosophical schools, philosophical schools of thought approach the idea of the universe being made up of one or multiple substances. The concept of one continues to be a source of inquiry and fascination for philosophers and thinkers of this day. And it is exp and its explanation, exploration and interpretations will likely continue for centuries to come. Thank you for tuning in on Fill Up on Facts. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode and this exploration of the concept of the world and its various interpretations across philosophical traditions. Until next time, take care. I hope you have a great evening, day, or night. I know those were in the right order, but take care and have a good one.